get rolling. I want to cover possibly a couple different sections today um, because of what we've done in the last couple of days. It should be very, very possible. <coughs> in the last couple of days, we've had a couple easy days, so we're going to throw some information at you today. Okay? So get ready to rock and roll. Okay. 7.1. I want to be talking about 7.1 and 7.2. <coughs> Okay, 7.1 is all about ratios and proportions. Now, we have done uh, a small assignment from that section. Um, ratio and proportions, I'm going to base my pace of instruction here on the fact that you guys have done a lot of ratio and proportion in the past. Okay, if I say something like, you know, girls and boys are 2 to 1 and there's 50 girls, how many boys are there, you could figure that out. It's really not a, not a huge thing, okay? Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, ex to um, uh, focus on just geometric applications of proportions and ratios at this point. <coughs> so, um, so if we take a look at geometry, if I've got, like, say, a triangle like this, okay? And let's say I've got three different angles. And let's say the angles are in the proportions of, uh, let's go, two, um, uh, let's let's just go, yeah, two, two, um, five to nine. Okay, so my angles are in the proportion of two to five to nine. This is what's called an extended proportion, where you have three different things. Have you seen a proportion where you have three different things before? No, you've probably just done boys to girls, or those that drive to school, and those that don't, or heads to tails, or something like that. When we have three things, then that gets to where we have three different things we might mix together. Okay, um, you know, like um, <coughs> like we were talking about recipes the other day. Um, you know, even uh, farming, you've got these all. You've got more than two ingredients that are coming together. Okay, so in this particular situation, if we're talking about angles in a triangle, <coughs> there's lots of different things that we could do um, to to solve this. But probably the first thing is. Could my angle be 2 degrees, 5 degrees, and 9 degrees? Why not? It's got to equal 180. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to take a look at what numbers remain in this proportion of 2 to 5 to 9 that have a sum of 180. Okay. So what we could do is we could say um, I've got 4, um, 10, you know, I, I could say here's my situation. And I think Max has already got it figured out, but I'm going to lead you to it just a little bit. 4, 10, and 18, are those three in the 2 to 5 to 9 ratio? Yeah, they are. But do they add up to 180 degrees? No. So, you know, it, it would be a pain in the butt to list all the possibilities. Okay? 6, multiplying by 3 now, 15, 27, that doesn't add up to 180. Okay? But how could I express each one of these angles? Well, if this is 2 to 5 to 9, how could I express the first one? As something with x. Let's go 2x. Okay. Then my second angle would be 5x. And my third angle would be 9x. And what would be, have to be true about all these three angles? They have to add up to 180. Okay. And, um, ooh, look, all right. So did you, um, okay, Ma uh, Max did it very quickly on his calculator. What did you do? What did you type in? Um, I divided 180 by 16. Okay, why 16? Because you add um, 2, 5, and 9 up. Exactly. So what you've got is you've got two parts, five parts, nine parts. All total, you've cut up all these angles into a total of 16 parts. So if you add these together algebraically, you get 16, 180. So then you find out the value of one little bit is going to be what? 11.25. Okay, we get a fraction, not the end of the rule. Okay, so then that is the value of x. So what that means is that is the multiplier from this 259 to get up to that magic point where they add up to 185 degrees, 180 degrees. <coughs> so how would I find all three angles then? Plug it in, plug it in. So my smallest angle then would be 22.5. Because I took 2 times my 11.525. And then this next one, what do I get? 56.25? Yep. 
and and the next one, 9 times this, what is it, 101.25? Okay, so there's our three different angles. Okay, so not a big deal. So you're taking something you've done before with proportions and you're just extending it out just a little bit. Okay, we can do the same thing with quadrilaterals. My sum's got to be 360 degrees. We do the same thing with pentagons. My sum's got to be three, 540 degrees. Okay, you can do it with any situation where you have more than three uh, parts, you can go ahead and um, <coughs> set it up something like this. But hopefully the idea of taking it times x, because what we're trying to do is find out, I've got two of this part, and five of this part, and nine of this part, because that's basically what they're saying when the ratio is two to five to nine. Okay? <coughs> so, this book is big on uh, um, <coughs> well, let's go like, um, so, I don't want to do this in the problem, just an interesting time. But like this one, 2 to 2 to 3, and the perimeter is 392. Well, if they're side lengths, side lengths don't have to add up to 180. Side lengths have to, they can add up to whatever they want to. In this case, they said the side lengths add up to 392. So then we'd have 2x plus 2x plus 3x equals 392. Just the sum's different, because they're talking about perimeter instead of the angles themselves. Okay, <coughs> so, so anyway, this book is big on talking about proportions like this. Um, if I go A over B, this is something you'll need, A over B equals C over D. Okay, um, <coughs> this is a um, situation where they, they talk a lot about means and extremes, Ooh. and this will make more sense in a couple different sections, okay? Where these might both be means, so this is a mean, this is a mean, and A and D would both be extremes. And that will make a lot more sense when we get to right triangle similarities, okay? <coughs> okay? <coughs> so, why is that helpful? Um, or uh, exact, kind of why does that come into play now? Well, if we do something like this, x over 10 equals, um, let's say, 12 over 30. How would you guys solve this? Cross multiply. Okay, so what you're doing is finding, you're finding the products of the means and the products of the extremes. You just never talked about them that way, okay? So when you cross multiply, you get 120 equals 30x. So your products of the means and products of the extremes. So x is obviously 4, okay? So this is something I definitely need you to be able to solve very well, but let's go, we're going to go ahead and crank this up to a higher level right away. <coughs> if I go negative 4 sevenths equals... 6 over 2y plus 5. So we got a proportion, okay? If we're going to solve this, still cross multiply, okay? But this was a little more involved, so you have to be a little more careful when you cross multiply, no big deal. So we get 46. No, not 46. Just as I say, got to be more careful. I take 7 times 6, and I get 46. No, we all know that's 37. Um, so 42, what does 42 equal in this case? Negative 8y minus 20, because you take negative 4 times all of that, um, all the bottom of that other fraction. Okay, and then we just finish it. 62 equals negative 8y, negative 8, negative 8, and I get y is equal to, in this case, 8, what is it, um, 7.75? Okay, so you know, just being able to solve something like that really shouldn't cause you a lot of problems. I hope it doesn't, um, but just in case. So I'm going to ask you guys to do this one here real quick on your own. You're going to get a decimal, but it's not the end of the world. Okay, 7 over x, or x minus 1 equals 9 over x minus x plus 4. Solve that real quick, please.
Nine times one is nine. Okay. I just saw you grab your calculator. I'm just trying to help you. Okay. Okay, so what do you get for X? Anybody? Boom, 18.5. This is where your past algebra stuff pays off. It shouldn't be a big deal. Distributing and all that good stuff. Okay? Um, so, let's take a look at um, one more problem here. Um, <coughs> Take a look at this one. A little proportion problem. Um, Monique randomly surveyed 30 students from her class and found that 18 had a dog or a cat for a pet. If there's 870, oh, this one's easy. This one's way too easy. Don't you think this is like way too easy? Okay. But there's a reason why I'm going to do this problem. Okay, so. So before you start calculating, give me a proportion I could use. 18 over 30, 18 over 30 equals x over 870. That would work. Would you have to use that proportion? No. <coughs> so what we did is we did pets over total. Okay? Let's challenge ourselves. Before we solve this, because we could all solve this. Give me a different proportion I can use. Give me a different proportion we come up with. You know we come up with a different proportion? No, just just a different one. Oh, I didn't think about that. You could go 12 over 30 no, equals... 870 minus x over 870. Make it more difficult, just in case you want to challenge, but we could definitely do that. Okay. The non pet people, this freaks out. Do you have a pet? Okay, good. What do you have? A dog and a pet. Okay, what do they get along? Enough. Oh, no. Okay, there you go. Okay. I want to show you just a couple others we could write. We could obviously go 30 over 18 equals 870 over x. Just got to stay organized. That's my total over my pets. Okay. What I could also do is this. I go 870 over 30 equals. What would that equal? 18. No. Because this right here is the school, to school um, total. And this is the survey total. So using S maybe wasn't the wisest thing. Okay, survey total. So school total over survey total would equal school pets over survey pets. We can do it that way as well. There's tons of different proportions we can set up as long as you stay organized. Okay. So let me show you why this is the same, okay? So we had this originally up here. Um, we had 18 over 30 is x over 870. So what I did was I said 870 over 30, 870 over 30 equals x over 18, okay? So here's what I'm gonna do. Let's forget about the pets, and by the way, it's 522, okay? Let's forget about the pets and all this good stuff for just a little bit, and let's go to letters. If I said A over B equals C over D, I want you to write whatever proportions you think that would mean the same thing. A over B equals C over D. Try and write it in a different way. 
Because the problem is, is on later on, you, some of you guys are going to write it differently. I want to know. I want you guys to know if you're just writing it a different way, or if you're not going down the right path. A over B equals C over B. There's probably an infinite number of proportions I could write. Maybe it won't be two sections today. Let's see. No, 30 seconds. Okay, come on, somebody, give me another one. Yeah, go. Uh, AC over B. A over what? AC, A divided by C. A divided by C, okay. Uh, equals. equals. B over D. B over D. Say dilly dill if you add that. Mm -hmm. Dilly dill. Okay, good. Give me another one. Go. There you go. There's another one. Okay. All these proportions are equivalent. Okay. Any others that somebody has? B over A equals D over C. And that's probably the, the four most common ones. Okay. Because you're just mixing them up. You could also do goofy stuff like this. You could say, hey, A squared over B equals C squared over D. <laughs> well, that would be. Oh, would that be true? Well, let's try it. So if I have two thirds equals four six, don't write this down. We're just going to play. Uh, I don't. I don't think this is correct. Do you guys agree those two are equal? I just said we could square the tops. Let's try it. Two squared is four over three equals sixteen over six. Are those things equal? Not even close. Good job, Rexford. Okay, because the problem was I ended up multiplying one side by one and the other side by something different. But what I could do is I could do something like this. I could do A plus B over B equals, what would A plus B over B equal? C plus D over D. Those things would be subtraction, addition, or those things would be fine. But, but the big thing is you just need to realize all four of those are the same. It's going to save you a lot of grief because when I write something up, you, your brain might be going down a different path. It doesn't mean you're wrong. It just means your brain works different. And be glad that your brain might work different than mine. Just probably not a bad thing. Okay. <coughs> so, um, <coughs> one real quick thing about similarity from section 7.2. And then I'm going to stop here real quick. 7.2, similar polygons. Okay. Well, first of all, we've got to understand what it means for them to be similar. Okay. So what do you guys think? When you think similar, what, is, what, do, you, what do you think? They're alike. Okay, so they're you know so like outside of geometry they oh they look similar, okay or they act similar, okay. Geometrically we have to kind of get a little bit more exact with this, and so basically I like to do this the same uh, same um, same shape, and they're in the same proportion. So if it's a long skinny rectangle, it's only going to be similar to other long skinny rectangles. Okay? And their proportion has to be the same. Now that worksheet the other day dealt with this whole idea of proportions being equal. So I don't feel we've got to cover that. Okay? But how do we um, how do we talk about this? Well, if I say triangle ABC 
is similar to triangle PQR. First of all, there's the symbol for similar. It's the tilde, okay, if you want to talk Spanish terms. It's just kind of saying it's a lot like. Notice it doesn't have the equals underneath it, the congruent does. So this right here tells us several different things, okay? It tells us that, well, first of all, the angles have got to be exactly the same. The angles are not in proportion. The angles have got to be equal. Because if I have a right triangle and I blow it up, is it still a right triangle? Yeah, the angle doesn't change size, okay? So what I could say, this, this tells me lots of different things. That angle A is congruent to angle P, angle... B is congruent to angle Q, angle C is congruent to um, angle R. So the angles are the same, and also I have to know that the sides are in proportion. Okay, so how do I write the sides are in proportion? Segment AB would be in proportion to what? PQ. That proportion would have to be equal to segment length AC over PR. It has to be the same as, what's the segment I haven't used yet? BC, good. BC over uh, QR. So a lot of the same correspondences we've had to do before, but now they're not equal, they're just in proportion. Okay. So, all angles have to be the same. All sides have to be in proportion. Okay? So, uh, <clears throat> um, so, like the book, I'm, not, I'm just going to redraw it real quick here. If I have a couple rectangles, and this is actually, actually the worksheet dealt with this, so I don't really, I don't really have to take a look at it. Um, uh, I'm going to just in case somebody missed it. So I get 18, 9. They're both rectangles. So the angles are the same. Are those similar figures or not? Well, what we'd have to do is we'd have to make proportions and see. And this is where you might make different proportions than somebody else. So you could go 4 over 9, does that equal 10 over 18? That could be one proportion we could set up. And is that true? Well, there's a very easy way to check this is true. You check the products of your means and extremes. 90 and 72. They're not the same. Okay, if we have two things that are equal, their mean, their products are going to be the same. Okay, so they are not congruent, or they're, they're not similar. Okay, another proportion we could have set up was 10 over 4. Help me out. 10 over 4 would have to equal 18 over 9. That's one thing you guys might like better. Okay, but all those proportions are equivalent as long as you get the matchups right. And this one's very obvious to see that that's not going to be the case. 18 divided by 9 is 2 where 10 divided by 4, last time I checked, is not 2. Okay? Um, so. Okay. So, I think that'll tackle those, um, a lot of those two sections. We'll come back and polish some things up tomorrow. And we'll consider 7.1 and 7.2 complete. Um, one of the things that I always think about with proportions is, do you ever watch like an older TV show on a new TV and everybody looks fat? Have you ever noticed that? Okay. Well, what happens is the old TV shows had a ratio of three to four. Okay, they were a three to four ratio. Now our new TVs, does anybody know what the new TVs are? They're actually 16 to 9. Definitely not the same proportion. Okay? So what happens is, is to take this picture and make it fit this screen, what do they do with it? 
they stretch it horizontally okay so somebody here that looks like this well they still are the same height but now they're wider all their surroundings are wider so everybody looks shorter and squattier make sense and sometimes you'll see it the uh, the other way as well if you uh, if you have your so if there's there's actually a, a very nice thing that you can do on most TVs you can set it up so you're looking at it and they'll just put a circle and if that circle is in fact a circle then there's no stretch going on in the way that your direct TV is feeding your TV or something like that how could you tell if there was a stretch going on circle was warped it was more like an egg or you know a more of an ellipse or an oval okay so yeah that's um, so it's just kind of funky it's always kind of caught me I'm like oh, okay don't like that it just kind of makes me makes me uncomfortable here we go so two two things today page 464 numbers I'm not going to pile this on because um, you should be able to do this very fairly well um, So let's go, let's just do odds. Sorry. Okay. Let's go um, 11 through 39 on. got to do the multiple choice. We got to keep doing that. 50 through 53. And then just a couple from the next section. Not a ton. So um, don't throw eggs at me yet. Tomato. Or tomatoes. There you go. Page 473. Numbers. and 15. And 18. Oh, about that? Let's make it 19. Let's just go almost all out today. 